Another key theme in these chapters is Jesus' continued mission to the poor. So as he travels, he keeps forming his new Israel, and he encounters all these people who are sick or blind. He meets Samaritans who are ancient enemies of the Jewish people. And famously, Zacchaeus, a Jewish man, but who heads up tax collection for the Romans. All of these social outsiders meet Jesus, and they're transformed by the encounter. And so they join his kingdom community, which Jesus describes as a great banquet party. He is here to seek and save the lost, and so he's celebrating when people discover the mercy of God. But not everybody at the party is happy. Luke includes multiple stories of Jesus at banquets with Israel's leaders, and these all become heated debates where Jesus confronts their pride and hypocrisy. And this resistance to Jesus, it ramps up, and he finally arrives in Jerusalem for Passover. As he nears the city, he's weeping. His disciples are hailing him as the Messianic king, but Israel's leaders are denouncing him. And he knows that their rejection of his kingdom of peace is going to set Israel on a road of resistance and rebellion against the Roman Empire. It will bring the city's downfall. Luke 19 He entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, A nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas, and said to them, Engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your mina has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little. You shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your mina has made five minas. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Lord, here is your mina, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit, and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, and at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten minas. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, 
The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, Would that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you, when your enemies will set up a barricade around you, and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you, because you did not know the time of your visitation. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were hanging on his words. So in today's video, we're gonna take you through a full body dumbbell workout. Yep. Now, this is a workout you can follow along with us. So you're gonna to wanna to use a pair of dumbbells that's moderate to lightweight because we're gonna do a lot of different exercises in this video. So for reference, I'm using a 20 pound set of dumbbells. And I'm using a 10 pound set of dumbbells. So if you need a little warm up just to kind of warm your body up yep. before we get started, a lot go ahead of reps. and do that. Otherwise, we're gonna jump right into it. Let's get into it.
All right, guys, hopefully you got a nice workout. Yes, and Dropped your a nice core is on fire and your arms are on fire. Exactly. So if this wasn't enough, if you want to go for another round, feel free to do so. You can yep. do two rounds, three rounds, make this 30 minutes, 45 minutes, just kind of make it work for you. Hey, guys, Brent here from the X and Christian Central. I just want to thank you guys for watching our video. We really appreciate it. I really hope it's helping you on your Bible goals and your other goals as well. Uh, be sure to check the links in the description for all the material that made this video possible. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to check the socials, our other socials over here. And please like and subscribe as well. Uh, by now, there should be a video for uh, the Babylon Bees Weekly News. I really encourage you guys to check that out. And our sermon link, which I also encourage, our weekly sermon link. I, I really encourage you guys to check that out as well. I really hope to see you guys tomorrow, and thank you guys again for watching our video. Bye.